Hi, I'm Mike Sintolo, Chief Analyst of Cabot Growth Investor and Cabot Top 10 Trader. I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review. I'm recording this late Friday morning, as usual, on October 6th. Um, so this week, kind of like last week, we started out pretty badly. I um, found a little bit of support as the week's gone on, including, knock on wood, so far today, we had a you know good jobs numbers, which is bad. Interest rates are up. Uh, on the day, but the market seems to be hanging in there, especially on the growth side of things. So we'll see how it goes. I think, you know, big picture or main piece of advice, nothing's really changed. We'd be cautious. The intermediate term trend of the basically everything is down indexes, stocks, sectors. Um, and no matter how you want to define it, at the very least, nothing much is going up. The number of stocks hitting new highs is not, you know, it's been in the single digits a couple of days recently on the New York or the NASDAQ, you know, so nothing's really powering ahead and some sort of counter trend rally or anything like that. And it doesn't really matter whether you're talking defensive stocks, growth stocks, value, commodities, income, whatever, you know, they're all either at the very least, they're not going up. Most of them are getting hit. Now, I will say, you know, I'm not just trying to, I mean, we're holding plenty of cash. We have you know, a lot of cash for the last couple of years, really. But I will say right now, um, a couple of things, a couple of rays of light. Number one, sentiment's terrible. Number two, we're getting some legitimate oversold readings. I'm not an oversold guy at all because I've seen a lot of these oversold things and then the market falls apart. Uh, but they're kind of alerts and you're getting things like more than 90% of stocks in the S&P 500 below their 50-day lines. Even last year in 2022, that occurred near lows. I'm not saying at the low, but you know within a week or two sort of thing. So you want to keep your antenna up. I'm also seeing more and more stocks you know, growth stocks kind of led the way down. They had a horrible, horrible earnings season, uh, July and August, uh, early August. Um, so they sort of led the way down in this correction, this leg of this correction here. Um, but lately we've seen more and more kind of either hit higher lows or not hit lower lows where just about all the indexes have. So a little bit of relative strength, a little bit of wheat separating from the chaff, whatever you want to say. Um, so we'd keep your eyes on that. I'd also just want to say big picture. I'm not a soapbox guy, but you know, if the market was up, if growth stocks bottomed two and a half years ago and we were up and a lot of stocks were up a ton and but they hadn't really done that much over the last year, you know, we'd be, you know, that's probably telling you you're in the later innings. OK, you don't know if it's the seventh inning or the ninth inning, but it's kind of the opposite here. Growth stocks top two and a half years ago, the market top two years ago. That doesn't mean we can't keep going down. And if interest rates go up, we probably will go down. But my point is just to keep in mind, like, don't obsess about you know, right now it's budget deficit, it's interest rates, Washington doesn't know what they're doing, inflation, Fed, and that's all legitimate to know about. But don't obsess over it. Just keep an open mind, especially when you're seeing some stocks, especially on the growth side, kind of start to resist. We'll see how it plays out, okay? But right now it's, it's difficult. You kind of have to be cautious, defensive in real life, but you want to keep your mind right too and just realize there will be a sustained trend that comes out of this, um, I think. Um, so we just have to wait for it to happen, okay? In Capital Growth Investors Model Portfolio, you know, we did do a little bit more selling this week. We're almost two thirds in cash. So clearly I'm not trying to trumpet sunshine here, um, but I, I am gonna go through quite a few stocks here that you can see are starting to resist the market. And the longer that goes on, if it can go on, you know, the better the chance that you can ID some leaders ahead of time before the market kicks into gear whenever that happens, okay? All right, enough with the preamble, and I'm back off the soapbox. Let's hop into MarketSmith. It's a product of Investors Business Daily. Great product. You can learn more about it at uh, marketsmith.com. So here's the NASDAQ. Nothing really more to say. The only thing I would say here is, as we run through the other indexes, it is holding up better than most. It's kind of hanging around the August lows, okay? And you can kind of see this blue line is relative to the S&P 500. You can see the low... Uh, is maybe you can, hopefully you can see, it was actually back here and actually it didn't hit, you know, relative to the rest of the market, or I guess to the S&P, um, it, it hit a higher low here recently and it's been kind of trickling up. You know, again, is that definitive? No, it's not definitive. It's just kind of a little bit of tea leaf reading, okay? More important to us, obviously, is just the trend. Right now, you could say sideways. I mean, if you want to say sideways, you can call it whatever you want. But at the end of the day, we're clearly below the 25 and 50 day moving averages. The rest of the indexes here are weaker. So this is the S&P 500. You can see clearly a lower low here compared to August, which I'm going to talk about here in a second. Um, but it is kind of testing this 200 day line. A lot of people are talking about this 4200 level. I'm not a really a level guy with indexes, which I've talked about 100 times in the past. It's just very obvious, but we'll see what it is. So far, it's kind of holding the 200 day line. It certainly would be a positive if it continued to do that, um, but intermediate term wise, you know, clearly negative. 
And then as you get into the broader stuff, it's uglier and uglier. This is the newer composite, which is now, you know, basically retesting. I talked about this last week. It's basically kind of almost in this huge range for the past. This is a weekly chart for the past, you know, all year really, um, below the 200-day line, but just kind of in this gigantic trading range. And when you dig into small caps, mid caps, even a little bit worse, you can see the IWM here is actually testing the lows of the last really all year back to last December. Uh, mid caps, not quite as bad, but in the same sort of boat. Okay, so either way, intermediate term trend, you know, clearly down. Okay, um, and just kind of going along with that is, you know, the S&P 500 looks a certain way and the NASDAQ does, but just, you know, if you're mutual funds are looking a certain way or you're picking stocks and they all look bad. This, this is RSP, which is just the unweighted S&P 500. And you can see it looks almost exactly like small caps, mid caps and all that. So it's not so much small caps are bad. It's just like the average stock this year really hasn't done anything. There's been some things that have worked, obviously, but the average stock really net net is either down or flat for the year type thing. So we'll see how it goes from here. Either way, right now, stretch to the downside, but the intermediate term trend is down. What I do see is interesting here is that um, we're starting to see, like I said, a little relative strength. I'm going to talk mostly about stocks here, but just a couple of index things. Um, you know, this is the SMH. I'm keeping an eye on the SMH because, A, I always do because it's semiconductors are a key group. B, they were the leading growth area this year, really the leading sector this year. I mean, I don't have a definition for that, but just it produced a ton of winners, obviously the AI boom, but it just had a ton of winners, a ton of stocks that were under major accumulation. And it still has some a lot of stocks that look at least halfway decent, you know, or basing normally. So it also had this double bottom, but this one's kind of like the NASDAQ. It's kind of hanging around its August low. So compared to the S&P and of course, compared to the broad market, you're starting to see a little bit of relative strength there. So that's just something, you know, I'm going to bring up a few stocks in that group. Before we get in the stocks, last thing I just want to mention, you know, at this point, you know, the, the things on the margin here are just, this is TLT and then IEF. That's TLT is long-term treasuries. IEF is kind of midterm treasuries. I think it's like eight years or something like that. But, you know, it's down on the day, but, you know, the weekly chart, let me blow it up for you. Where's the... Uh, Okay, so I mean, clearly there's been like a clear breakdown. This was sort of the breakout of rates, was the breakdown in bond prices, and we're just, you know, blowing off to the downside. I shouldn't say blowing off. We're just melting down to the downside. Obviously, we're going to be looking for some sort of support in here. IEF, same sort of thing. Um, you know, it's been the tail that's wagged the dog, pretty obvious. But I think you know, just keep an eye on these every day. If we can get some, you know, decisive rally, maybe a retest. I mean, you know, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, but some sort of move in here where we can the rates can stabilize. I don't think interest rates are going to go up a quarter point a week for the next year. You know, I think <laughs> they're going to stabilize at some point. We'll see where they do. And when they do, the market, you know, may have an, a chance here to, you know, really enter a real rally, sustained rally phase. OK, so just two things I'm keeping an eye on now. Just I wrote about this in the letter. So like I said, you got the indexes and the broad market, um, not in complete disarray, but you have this sort of second leg down here, clearly below, this is the S&P 500, clearly below the August low. So if you're a relative strength person, a lot of people look for bargains. We look for relative strength. You're looking for stocks in, in, in sectors like chips that are hanging around their August lows. Now, I mean, you're not looking for something that fell 60% in August, you know, just completely disintegrated. That's, that's no good. But something that pulled back somewhat normally, even sharply, and is starting to try to round out, okay? So here's just a variety of names. These are from like mega cap, well-known names to, you know, tech, to growth, to some other things. OK, this is Tesla. It's getting hit today. They I think they cut prices on their automobiles or whatever. But, you know, it had this was the low. Obviously, it had a big net net run 100 to 300. That's pretty good. Um, of course, after a huge decline last year. Um, so it got hit very hard here. But here's your August low. Here's your um, September low. And then even right here so far, I mean, this is down. I'm recording this again late Friday morning, but it's kind of hanging around even 10 or 20 points above where it was in late September while the S&P and stuff, you know, has hit in the broad market, has hit lower lows, okay? So this is like a name that looks good. Um, Meta, um, listen, I'm not a big, big cap guy. Um, you know, just obvious, everybody owns it, whatever, 5,000 funds already own Meta. But, um, you know, I have to say, number one, the stock had an amazing comeback, which is kind of noteworthy. Uh, number two, so far, the base, you can see down here, there's been no real selling in the base. If anything, there was a little support last week. And it's just very, very tight in here around the 300 area. 
And again, you know, not to overdo it, but here's your August low, here's your September low. So far, here's your October low. I mean, obviously it's very, very early in the month. Um, relative performance line at new highs, that's very interesting to me. I mean, this is a name where in theory, if the market kicked off tomorrow, this could be kind of your, you know, mega cap institutional play that really breaks out on the upside. We'll see, okay. I mentioned SMH. A couple others aren't quite as good, but this is Avago, not Avago, Broadcom used to be called Avago, AVGO. A little bit of a lower low here, but again, just net net, you're just basically hanging around the August lows, which I think is pretty good, like like most chip stocks. And you're looking for some of these things, it's kind of setting up a pretty clear, like, can you get above the 50 day? Can you, give a, can you get above the prior high in August? That sort of thing. So that's just a name to take a look at. Um, Synopsis, SNPS. Um, I think I mentioned this was in top 10 this uh, last week. It's kind of a steady eddy, a great growth story. Uh, let me just change the price scale back. Okay. Um, you had this pop on the AI on the weekly chart, and it's just stayed very, very tight. It's a high price stock. I know everyone, not everyone loves 400 and $70 stocks. But I mean, you can just see this is just a very nice, tight pattern. They kind of rejected it new highs, but it really couldn't pull back. Now it's right back testing resistance. You know, I'm not saying breakouts in a bad environment. They're usually not high odds plays, but we're kind of seeing more and more of them. And the RP line is closing on a new high. Okay. Um, well, I might as well mention NVIDIA. Okay, not as strong as the others. But again, here's your August low. Here's your um, September low so far, obviously very early. Here's your October low, testing the 50 day line, you know, and maybe this this entire, you know, whatever this was really since May, I guess, since Memorial Day, no net progress, you know, maybe that's enough to kind of reset it and allow the stock to get going again, you know, obviously, if the market kicks into gear. So again, you playing with a 50 day line here, there is resistance up near 500. But overall, a pretty nice pattern, you know, in the chip names, um, Dell Technologies, this is actually kind of a I guess it's a value sort of, it's got a little bit of an AI thing, but it's also value. You can see it's had a huge run, um, a pretty big run here. Huge gap is what I should have said, uh, man, let's see, about a month ago. And since then it has pulled back. So, you know, down here you have you know, your August low. It is slipping below its September low, but still holding up very well. So Dell, um, you know, not a true blue growth stock, but kind of has some interesting story there. Uh, Duolingo, D-U-O-L. Um, this one's a little different because it topped out actually back in May, kind of when the market uh, was getting going, or at least the AI stuff was. But here's your August low, um, September low, so far your October low, hanging up very well. You know, we'll see what happens. Maybe we get a rally, but it's the stuff off the bottom that rally. You know, we'll see how it goes. But I like to flag these things. Um, On to innovation. This was another chip stock I should have brought up earlier. Um, but, you know, it's been kind of chugging its way higher, kind of choppy in here. But reacted very well to earnings for a few days, pulled back normally, held the 50 day line. And again, just kind of hitting higher lows in here, even as the market's been grinding to lower lows, just kind of a clue that if, you know, the market gets going, it could spring out of here. Um, CrowdStrike, CRWD, it looks, I mean, I don't want to jinx it here, but it looks pretty good. Um, again, here's your low, reacted well to earnings, low, low. And just as soon as the kind of the pressure comes off the market, um, the stock kind of pops higher, you know what I mean? And, and today's, you know, looking pretty good so far. It's up seven points. We'll see what happens. But again, testing its high, new RP peak here, you know, pretty good clue. Uh, Palo Alto Network's not as strong. But again, here's kind of like your August low, obviously gapped on earnings. You know, September low, much higher. Um, really tightened up here despite all this mess here the last few days. Now it's, you know, it's a couple of good days if they happen. You know, from new high ground, the RP line here, you can see is almost back to new high ground. Um, this is a different one. This is, um, I've mentioned this before, this is Procore Technologies. Um, so not near its high, but one thing I noticed here is, first of all, you have a lot of stocks. Let me just go on a tangent over here. You have a lot of stocks like this that don't look amazing. They're not like ready to get going tomorrow. But you step back and look at the weekly, it's like they came public or they had a big run, you know, back here. They got killed. And they've basically just been trying to etch this like, forever tedious bottom, right? For the last year, year and a half sometimes. Doesn't mean they're gonna get going, you know, maybe they gap down on earnings next, you know, this month, next month, whatever. But you, know, you kind of flag on Procore kind of down to the 40 week year, 200 day line. And just noticing again, here's the August low and it basically held that low, okay? And now it's actually been kind of perking up here with the market, you can kind of see the relative performance line strengthening and not far from a new high ground. So this is a name fundamentally I've always liked. So just keeping an eye on it. Um, biotech remains tough, okay? But Neurocrine, a couple names in there, Neurocrine, NBIX, 
Um, you can see it kind of it got hit here. Now it's kind of coming back. Not the most dynamic name, but pretty good growth and kind of held the 50 day line here bouncing. All right. Down in you know, August was down here. Here's your recent low up here. Um, Excelsius, EXEL, you know, clean company, profitable, free cash flow, projected growth, you know, not growing 100% a year or anything, not changing the world, but, you know, nice breakout here. This is kind of a classic sort of first test of the 50 day line, so to speak, and just hold it. You wouldn't know the market's kind of a mess here. Here's the RP line, uh, obviously at new highs are pretty close to it. Um, Apollo Group, I've mentioned this one, or Apollo Global. This is, um, you know, bull market stock, kind of like Blackstone, more fixed income. I mean, the relative performance line's dynamic. You know, you wonder if sort of all the mayhem that's going on in fixed income maybe is helping the company. So that's, you know, maybe it's a little counter cyclical, but at the end of the day, it owns a lot of assets. So I still think of it as a bull market stock. Nice bounce off the 50 day line there. Uh, Pin Duo Duo, or I guess they call themselves PDD Group. I mean, look at this, this thing, I know it's Chinese and all this stuff, but it's etched this huge base since really the start of the year, February, call it February 1st. Um, kind of stair-stepped its way higher, you know, some nice volume, had a very nice accumulation uh, week on earnings about a month ago. And then during this latest market slide, okay, here's your August low. Obviously you had a gap, but here's this low, this low, and now it's actually pushing to new highs today as I record this. We'll see how it goes, but big volume and everything. So I find that interesting. And then this one, it's not my favorite because it did get, this was a lot of volume here, but this is Spotify. This right here, I'm not a big fan of, but um, Spotify is this one that, you know, got killed. It's a turnaround situation, um, activist investors, that sort of thing, you know, focusing more on cash flow. Earnings are supposed to turn positive next year. And I think cash flow is ahead of that. But it's kind of interesting that it did get hit. And again, here's your August low as the market sold off. This one really just kind of went straight side. It's still got kind of just cranking out straight sideways, very tight. Um, so we'll see how it goes. It does. It probably does have some resistance up here, but just seeing more stocks like that where, you know, when the S&P is doing this and I'm seeing more names that, you know, not just defensive names, right? It's not like I'm, in fact, those are some of the worst performers right now, but it's not like we're finding stocks that are steady eddies that are growing 3% a year that are, you know, bulletproof. Obviously those things can hold up better, but instead we're finding some real growth companies, whether it's chips or whatever, that software that did pull back, you know, did rally. Some of them rallied to new highs, but did rally, pulled back to a higher low, you know, rallied some more. They pulled back again this week, held up. And now today they're starting to pop. Now this is just one day. Maybe by the time the market closes, everything's gone to hell. You know, so I'm not saying you take action on it, but I do think combined with what I said earlier, I really would just say right now is a time for caution and patience and just let everyone else fight it out on a day-to-day -day basis and anticipate economic reports and and predict about Fed speeches and all that, all that garbage. Uh, right now it's time for patience because the trend is down, but it's also a time to kind of keep your head in the game because if the market does turn, if this, you know, it's been a year since the major low last October, if the market does bottom and if, you know, the pressure comes off the market for more than, you know, two, three, four days, if interest rates can calm down for a few weeks, you know, just stop going up. Um, I do think there's a lot of stocks that could at the very least pop higher. And if things go well with the market, you know, really have a sustained advance. Okay. That's all the time I have for today. As always, thanks for listening. Come by again next week for another Cabot Weekly Review.